and welcome to this service on the first Sunday after Easter, brought to you from the Ceredigion Circuit in West Wales. We begin with our call to worship. It comes from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We sing the hymn in Singing the Faith 297. Christ is alive, let Christians sing. to our prayers of adoration and confession. First of all, a prayer of adoration. Let us pray. Glory be to you, Lord God. You raised your son from the dead. Glory be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You live and reign forever. Glory be to you, Holy Spirit. You breathe new life into God's people. Glory be to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Amen. And now our prayer of confession. O God of life, we are very sorry that we are so slow to let go of those thoughts and words and deeds which we know are wrong. Because you love us, we know they are unworthy. Because you strengthen us, we know they have no power over us. And yet we hold on to them. Forgive us, Lord, our reluctance to walk the new way, to live the new life. Help us to choose the right so that day by day we may grow in what is good and true and just. Amen. And now we're going to have three readings from Scripture, and that will be followed by our hymn, Christ has risen while earth slumbers. 
When they had brought them, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and saviour, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. The reading is taken from Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 to 8. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Thanks be to God for his word. The Gospel reading is taken from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Amen. Christ has risen on the songless, Christ has risen when he died, as he said and as he promised, Doubted and denied, let the Lord embrace the blessing, let the sun sustain the cheer, let the world confirm the rumor, Christ is risen, God is here. Christ has risen. 
Christ has risen for the people whom he loved and died to save. Christ has risen for the wicked, bringing close to grace his grave. Christ has risen for disciples, huddled in an upstairs room. He whose word inspired creation is not silenced by the Christ has risen to companion, former friends to fear the night, sensing loss and limitation, where their faith had once been bright. They belong, what is no longer, they expect no hopeful sign, till Christ ends their conversation, breaking bread and sharing wine. In his commentary on the Acts of the Apostles, Professor Jimmy Dunn writes, the apostles had been arrested for preaching while under orders to desist. In a tremendous gesture of defiance, which has been the inspiration of the church in all times of persecution, they replied, we must obey God rather than men. In Peter's speech, we are given a fragment of what a very early Christian sermon would contain. We find human witnesses empowered by the Spirit. We are speak they are speaking about what has happened. The Scottish scholar William Barclay wrote decades ago, a witness is one who speaks from first-hand knowledge of something they had known from personal experience. He mentions particularly new life, love, forgiveness, acceptance. And then we have that reading from the book of Revelation. This book is one which reminds us that New Testament documents come out of a world that is very different from our own. Its ideas, concepts, and the language used is very foreign to us. In this passage, the one who is, who was, and who is to come is God. A God who is revealed as eternally present, always with us. William Barclay again reminds us that Revelation is a letter. It begins at verse 4. It is written to the seven churches in the Roman province of Asia and begins with praise for Jesus Christ. We can see that it's written in the present tense. Who loves us and has set us free? This witnessing led to the setting up of a community a family, a royal household, priests, all who now have direct access to God. In all of the Gospels, there are only two accounts of what happened on the evening of the resurrection. One in Luke, when Jesus appears to the disciples traveling to Emmaus and this account in John. We find ourselves in Jerusalem, in a room with locked doors, because those present are in hiding, and somehow 
Jesus comes to them. Peace be with you, he says. This peace is not a pious hope for them. It was a present fact because Jesus was alive and he was with them. He breathed on them, saying, Receive the Holy Spirit. The commentators say this piece is extremely important for John because the word he uses is exactly the word used in the beginning of the book of Genesis when God breathed into Adam and gave him life. For John, this marks a new creation, the creation of the church. Of course, when all this happened, Thomas was absent, and when told, he will not believe it. He needs incontrovertible evidence. If he could put his finger in the holes in Jesus' hand, or put his hand into the wound in the side of Jesus, then he would believe. Seeing is believing. He was given that evidence a week later, when he was with the other disciples in the same room. Again, Jesus entered, even though the doors were locked. The invitation is given to Thomas to get his solid proof and so believe. His response was to say, my Lord and my God. I like Thomas, not just because, like me, he is a twin, but he is someone I can relate to. He is sensible. He is not prepared to believe in fancy ideas without convincing proof. His action also gave Jesus that wonderful opportunity to say, because you have seen me, you have found faith. Happy are they who find faith without seeing me. Those words of Jesus apply to me and to you and can apply to anyone else. Faith is available to all for all time because we too can put our faith in Jesus. Our faith in Jesus is not based just on what we can read, but on an experience of discovering or being discovered by a risen Lord. We can know him and we do know him. We are loved, forgiven and free. We receive that life in all its fullness, which Jesus offers to us. We are indeed a new creation. Alleluia. And now we come to our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. First, a prayer of thanksgiving. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you because in your great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. From the dead. You created us and all things and gave us a place within your purpose. When in our ignorance and disobedience we turned against you, you sent your Son Jesus to be our Saviour. We thank you that he became man and shared fully in our human life. We thank you that in obedience to your will, he suffered the loneliness and agony of death on the cross for us. We thank you that he has risen again to reign with you in glory. We thank you that by his death, he has conquered death, and that by his resurrection, he has opened the way to our freedom and, fee and the peace of heaven. Send us your Holy Spirit, Father, that in power and confidence we may live as his disciples and serve him in the world. 
until with all his people we come at last to the love and joy and peace of your kingdom. We ask it for Christ's sake. Amen. And now we come to our prayers of intercession. After I say the words, crucified and risen Lord, reveal yourself to us, would you please respond with, that we may be faithful and believing. Lord, we are riddled with doubts about you and your trustworthiness, your goodness, your power, your existence. Sometimes what we see, feel and learn affirms your living, loving presence. Sometimes the reality of evil and suffering and the shallowness of our daily lives make us doubt or leave us afraid. Crucified and risen Lord, reveal yourself to us that we may be faithful and believing. Lord, we are riddled with doubts about ourselves and our lives. We feel we have lost control over our future, over what we are, ruled by emotions, fear or apathy, governed by circumstances, responsibilities, frustrated by illness or lack of ability. We are not what we wish we were. We do not know whether or how to change. Crucified and risen Lord, reveal yourself to us, that we may be faithful and believing. Lord, we are riddled with doubts about your body, the Church, about our future in an age which rejects our beliefs and values, about our mission in a troubled world where so many need help and support, but where the issues are complicated and we feel powerless and small. Crucified and risen Lord, reveal yourself to us that we may be faithful and believing. Lord, we are riddled with doubts about the future of our world, a world polluted and plundered over successive generations, a world where economic forces rule the hearts and minds of nations, a world where nation strives against nation, and no one knows who is friend or foe. Crucified and risen Lord, reveal your, yourself to us that we may be faithful and believing. Heavenly Father, we know that you have not promised us an easy life, but you have promised that whatever happens, nothing can separate us from your love. We ask that you will keep us alive in this faith. In the name of your faithful Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
And now we sing the well-known Easter hymn from Singing of the Faith. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Christ was raised from the dead. Strengthen us to walk with him in his risen life. And may almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen.